morning and welcome to St. James on this lovely Harvest Festival Sunday, the first Sunday in October. I can't believe it's October already. Where has the year gone by? Anyway, a very warm welcome today. Welcome to everyone joining us live on Facebook or who will be watching us later on Facebook or YouTube. You're very welcome to this place. Everything that you need is on the order of service you were given as well as on the screen here, please do join in the words in bold or bright yellow on the screen. You've also been given a hymnal as a couple of our songs um, are songs of praise from the BBC songs and the words are very small, but the words are in the book. So if you don't have a hymnal and you would like one, please do raise your hand and we'll get one to you. Otherwise you might want to read those when we get to those songs. Thank you everyone who has provided food for our Harvest Festival um, service today. It's really amazing the generosity and the abundance that God provides. So thank you everyone and thank you for the knitters who have given us some autumnal bunting that looks absolutely amazing. So please do look at the bunting and enjoy it. Thank you the knitter, knitting group. Um, who have provided that for us. And you might have heard that we on Wednesday are starting a Streatham pantry in the porch of the church. So the food that we have that we see here, some of it will be provided to Streatham uh, residents that we know of right now, but other than them, the food will be placed in the porch on Wednesday morning from 10.30 to 6. And information has gone out to the village about this. And hopefully people who are in need of food can come and get food rather than travel all the way to the Ely Food Bank. Um, we don't have a food bank here in the village, so it's kind of like a food bank. If you need food, food is provided here. People are welcome to come and take what they need. Others are welcome to come and bring and drop off anything during that time. So if you can't make those times, or if you know of someone who's in need who cannot make those times, they're to contact me and we can set up a different time for them. Um, but we want to provide a need in the village, especially in the light of the petrol, shall we call it crisis, um, uh, traveling to Ely and back, for food uh, is necessary, but if we don't have to do it, we can provide a, a service in our village. This is what we're going to trial and see how it goes. So this food will be part of that. If after a few weeks it doesn't get taken up, then we'll take it to the Ely Food Bank. So it's not that we're going to let it go to waste, but we want to provide something for people that they don't have to travel so far. So. That starts this Wednesday. And please do remember on Wednesday mornings from 9.30 to 10, we have morning prayers here. Everyone is welcome. Please spread the news. And we meet in the glass room and have a really wonderful start to our day for morning prayer. Let us quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship. A verse from the Bible before we say our opening prayer, before we sing our first song. Psalm 67 verse 6 says, The land has yielded its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. So we're going to start by standing and singing our first hymn, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. Number 106 in the hymnal. Please stand and join us.
remain standing for our opening prayer. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is with us. us. Faithful one whose word is life, come Amen. with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing our next song, All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 23 in the hymnal. seated and Sharon will bring us our Bible readings now. Thank you Anna. a very good morning to you all. Um, our Bible readings for today comes, the first one comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 10. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take nothing out of it. We can take nothing out of it, but if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 33. Do not worry. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the veins of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in, in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why, why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. 
If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith, do not worry. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Let me read another harvest story from Jesus. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have nowhere to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I'll store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. I love Harvest Festival. It's so positive, ancient, natural and pretty. Lovely flowers, pumpkins, Lots of food, beautiful gifts from people. And it's an almost universal instinct to be grateful for the produce of the earth. And services like this occur in many religions and have been observed down through antiquity, either to thank a generous God or to appease a frightening God. The Bible supports the first kind. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 10 says, When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. But should we also be fearful? In our technologically sophisticated Western scientific society, we tend not to be afraid of the whims of nature. We have fertilisers and tractors, insecticides and subsidies, intensive farming and genetic modifications, insecticides and subsidies, I've said that already, haven't I? <laughs> Silos, refrigerators and international tri transport. We're not afraid of the winter to come. We don't personally have to worry whether we now have enough flour to last till next September or how we'll stop the rats getting to it. We feel we have it all taken care of. Why worry? It is as if we all have huge barns full of stores and are determined to take life easy, eat, drink and be merry, as the farmer in Jesus' parable told himself on the day before he died. Our life is unimaginably easy, rich and trouble-free compared with that of our ancestors. For us, nature is a pussycat. So God is taken for granted, or irrelevant, or treated as dead. Then comes a disastrous hurricane. Hundreds die, thousands are homeless, the infrastructure collapses, and panicking citizens steal and shoot at the police. Or a pandemic kills millions and puts the world economy into freefall. Or a container ship gets stuck in the Suez Canal. Or a huge CO2 plant closes. Or there isn't enough wind to generate electricity and a gas pipeline is offline, so energy goes up in price. Or our government sends many lorry drivers and poop, fruit pickers back to the continent and we see empty shelves in the supermarket. There's a rumour of a shortage of fuel and suddenly there is a shortage. 
In the long queues, the raw nerves of society are exposed, and the law at work seems to be very often the law of the jungle. People panic and fight, and the prices go up. The rich profit or hoard, the poor suffer. The weak are left to wither like the fruit that wasn't picked. Goodness knows what we would do after a really bad harvest. And Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. Has he no idea what real life is like? But Jesus did know the problem, because it was a very precarious world which he walked in on this earth. And to those people whose lives depended on the efficiency of their ox, the strength of their arm, the timing of the rain, the willingness of friends to help, the reliability of their boat or their wine press, and the dread of locusts, to them he said, do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagans run after all these things, and your father knows that you need them. We could be tempted to say, wake up Jesus, this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Survival is about getting the food before the food gets you. It's all very well saying God provides for sparrows, but haven't you heard of sparrow hawks? The lilies are lovely, but what about the lions? But Jesus was awake. He knew the facts of life better than we do. His whole life was lived on the knife edge of survival. At a violent time in an occupied country, under despotic regimes and with a catalogue of health hazards. And despite all those dangers, needs and problems, he still said, and do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. Your Father knows that you need them. If ever anyone had a right to be a bit more evolutionary in his thinking, to speak of the survival of the fittest and nature read in tooth and claw, it was him. But he didn't. He chose to see it all in a different way. He chose to stress the spiritual over the physical and the priority of the kingdom of heaven over this fallen world. He said, seek first God's kingdom and all these things will be given to you as well. Prioritise God's kingdom. Put God first. So, Volcanoes, droughts, tsunamis, hurricanes, locusts and Brexit are all part of the fallen world in which we live. We can respond in one of two ways. We can worry and fret, as I do, or we can turn to God and trust in him, as I ought to. We can put our faith in the world with its delinquent streak, or we can put it in the, ne in the next world with its promise and hope. But I can't end there. There is a problem with quoting Jesus saying, do not worry about tomorrow. It has to be balanced with other readings. You fool, this very, life, your night, this very night your life will be demanded from you. And from Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it, but if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. We all die, and we all leave a legacy. As well as my utterly depressing list of disasters I gave early, earlier, there's another list. The planet is overheating. The sea levels are rising. The poles are melting. The weather is more violent. The deserts are extending. The rainforests are shrinking. Areas are becoming uninhabitable, many rivers are more polluted, the sea is clogged with plastic, and the air is poisonous in many cities. The Earth's biggest problem is overconsumption by the richer nations. We have gone on from building bigger barns to building bigger rubbish dumps, and from there to exporting our rubbish and polluting industries to poorer countries. Not in my backyard has gone global. Nimbyism writ large. We need to hear again and practice godliness with contentment is great gain. We should all live simpler, purer, more contented lives.
We need to stop being consumers and start being contributors to the solution. The world says you have plen plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. That's what the world says. That's what the advertisers say. That's what we do. But God says, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then what will you get for what you have prepared? What will you get? Or rather, who will get what you have prepared for yourself? What are you leaving behind? It's worth thinking about that. What are you leaving behind? You'll probably write a will. But what are other things are you leaving behind? The mess that some of us created. Someone else has to tidy up. And it's not just the house, it's the world we live in. Jesus says, life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. And he says, seek God's kingdom. Seek God's kingdom. Seek God's kingdom. And God's kingdom starts here on earth. And he commanded us in the very beginning to work and take care of the world, to husband it, to look after it. That was the command to Adam right at the beginning. So I hope we can redeem Harvest Festival from being just a celebration of the good things of this life, which we have far too many of to a respect for this world in preparation for the better things in the next. This world has beautiful things. Heaven is even better. This world has ugly things, but think of heaven. It's unalloyed good. We belong to Jesus and are citizens of heaven, but we need to be aware of what we're leaving behind. Your Heavenly Father knows your needs. But one day he will also say, this very night your life is demanded from you. Then who will get what you've prepared for yourself? We will answer for our stewardship. So what are we going to leave when we die? It probably won't be a bigger barn, it might be a bigger bank account, a bigger wardrobe, a faster or bigger car, a nicer house or conservatory, a smarter or bigger TV. These things are not necessarily wrong. But they're worldly goods, and they come at a price which is being paid by the planet and by the poor. If you leave those things, you're leaving the next generation with a debt of global pillaging, poverty, pollution and problems. Let's seek God's kingdom, rather than making our kingdom bigger. Don't be like the farmer whom God called you for, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. I could add, and where no environmental or, ecolo or ecological damage is caused. For where your treasure is, Jesus said, there will your heart be also. Let's bow our heads for a prayer. Forgive us, Lord, for the treasure we have stored up on earth. And forgive us that that is where our hearts are. But we want to give our hearts to you. And we want to store up treasure in heaven. Help us to be content with less. Godliness with contentment is great gain. It's a gain. Help us to gain that, rather than all these other things. Help us to build up a bank account in heaven, treasure for the future. And help us to be the, the solution to the world's problems, rather than additional difficulties presented by us. So help us to live with a small footprint, contented lives, looking to heaven 
and living for Jesus. For your glory's sake. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. We're going to stand and sing our next song, number 200 in Mission Praise, Great is Thy Faithfulness, for our Lord is faithful to us, and we are ever so grateful. Please do stand and join us. come now to that part of our service where we say sorry to God for the wrongs that we have done. Jesus says repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Together we say, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today, a special harvest Thanksgiving collect. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please do stand and join me in our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers of intercession, and David will bring that to us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Creator God, we praise you. We thank you for the enormous gift of the natural world. Truly, we declare God is great. In our celebration today of the harvest, we acknowledge that everything good comes from you and that your provision for your people is unfailing. We ask your forgiveness, Lord, for our failure to use your wonderful gift wisely, our failure to treat your creation with proper respect. We have failed to live up to the trust that you had in us, and we continue to fail to take responsibility for our own part in your plan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of kings, Lord of all, we ask you to inspire our leaders and the leaders of all the nations to negotiate fair and workable commitments, to take action to reverse climate change, we understand that commitments from our leaders do not guarantee action, but they are at least a first step. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord Jesus, work together with your Holy Spirit to encourage people everywhere to do whatever they can to work for a change of attitude to the environment and the way we look after it. Small steps in the right direction are better than just standing still. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We humbly ask you, loving God, to help those whom we know who need your special care today. We mention them to you in our hearts, 
during this moment of silence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's bring our prayers together as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn. Uh, number 732 in Mission Praise, we plow the fields and scatter. And I just want to let you know there are some slight word changes on the screen as to what's in the book in the third verse, the, the ending lines of the third verse. It doesn't really matter what you sing. I think it'll be fine. So if you want to read the words in the book, It'll go along with the music. If you want to read the words on the screen, that'll be fine too. But just be aware, there are some slight word changes. Please do stand and join me.
And now for the dismissal. A special harvest blessing before that. May the Lord bless us in the city and the countryside, in our homes and families, our land and animals, in our comings and goings, our shopping and cooking, in our stores and labors, our finances and giving, in our health and leisure, our service and worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Together we say, Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Have a very blessed week.